I invite you to join me, please, as we read our call to worship responsibly. Come, hear the greatest story ever told, the story of God's faithfulness. We come to hear God's faithfulness to the prophets, the disciples, and to all of us. Come, hear the greatest story ever told, the story of God's love. Come learn of the greatest story ever told, and then go out to share the good news. Jesus Christ has brought us salvation. Praise be to God. Good morning and welcome to worship at Central Baptist Church on this first day of August. And believe it or not, the last Sunday before school begins again. As we look toward the beginning of a school year and begin to wrap up the summer season together at Central. We do so by having an opportunity to share in the experience of our children at Passport Camp from just a few weeks ago as Katie Faison preaches for us and leads us through the camp theme together this year as we worship together. And Katie, incidentally, is uniquely qualified to do just that, not just because she is the minister to children here at Central. Two years ago, Katie was asked to write the sermons for all of passport camps, for every week of camp across every location across the southeast for the entire summer. Uh, they do that, by the way, uh, get one person to write all of the sermon material for all of the camps. Uh, they do that so that the different preachers over the different weeks and at the different locations um, have some common material to work from to ensure some level of consistency and messaging among all the children who experience Passport each year. So two years ago, they asked Katie to write the Passport sermons, but last year there was no Passport, at least no in-person Passport camp because of the coronavirus. But they liked Katie's work so much that they made the choice to keep it for this year and to take Katie's work and make it work inside this year's Passport theme as well. So our associate pastor's work has been used over the last month or two to impact the lives of literally thousands of elementary school students and their families and their churches as they have returned home. And this morning, we get to share in their experience with Katie live and in person right here in our sanctuary, <laughs> speaking and preaching and teaching in front of us today. It's a real <coughs> privilege. Thank you, Katie, for your leadership then and now, I have one more announcement to make this morning, one that I thought maybe I'd never have to make again, uh, but our guest soloist in worship last week developed symptoms after leaving us later in the week last week and subsequently tested positive for the coronavirus. We don't expect her uh, to develop serious complications from the illness, but we want you to be aware of any potential exposure. Anne and Julia and I last Sunday were in closer contact with her than most, so we are wearing masks this morning. And as I'm sure all of you are aware, the CDC guidance on mask wearing in shared public indoor spaces has changed this week. We have from the very beginning of the pandemic said that we would follow the best advice from public health professionals as we seek to guide our life together here at Central throughout the pandemic uh, and the Delta variant uh, that is currently spreading across our country as we all know, should be taken seriously. So you, you will see some of us wearing masks on the platform and we encourage you to take appropriate precautions for you and your family and in your own lives as well as we work to make it together through this next little spike in coronavirus cases. We're grateful for all of you who have gathered with us here in the room for worship this morning. 
and grateful too for those of you who are joining us online or on television as we worship here in the room right now. We are aware of your presence and count you among our congregation as we gather here today. We gather for worship every week at Central because we believe that the shared experience in worship has the power to transform us, and this week is no exception. So my prayer for you and for me this week is as it is every week, that God might use these next few minutes to just reach into us and change our lives. Welcome to worship at Central. Children to join me at the front for our children's sermon. 
please. Good morning, everyone. Let's try it again. Good morning, everyone. I have a question for you today. Does anyone here have a favorite story? Robert, what's your favorite story? It could be a book or a TV show or a superhero or... Hudson is sitting right here, and I know that his favorite superhero is Batman. Batman is a story. Uh, does anyone have anything else that they come back to over and over again that you find yourselves watching on TV over and over again? Yes. We can be heroes. That's great. Anybody watch Frozen over and over and over again? I know there are a few people in front of me for whom that is for sure true. You like We Can Be Heroes, too? Me too. <laughs> you too, Lindley? The Descendants? <laughs> That's great. I have some of my favorites right here. Um, I have a favorite book, The Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, we've got a, a student right up here at front who I know is reading that book right now. It's got intrigue and deception and revenge and hidden identity in it. It's great. I read it every couple of years together. I brought one of my favorite movies. You have that one? Oh, Narnia is your favorite book. That's a great set of books. A good favorite, too. Uh, Tombstone, Gunfight at the OK Corral, anybody? Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, a favorite movie of mine. And I have a few favorite books that we read with our kids at home. Hudson has read these for four straight years now, and his little brother and little sister will read them, too. Little Blue Truck, is that a favorite of anybody? Anybody remember that growing up? If you haven't yet. I bet you used to read it when you were little, littler. When you were three or four. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good book for like two and three-year-olds. And The Monster at the End of This Book, too, is a great book at the Sap House right now with our younger children as well. Uh, stories are powerful, and I want you guys to remember today that stories are everywhere. You can even know at this young age that almost anyone and anything you run into for the rest of your life will be trying to tell you a story, tell you their version of the way they think the world works. And we do the exact same thing at church. We tell stories all the time at church. Sometimes in Sunday school, you'll learn a Bible story with your Sunday school teacher, right? Or here in worship, we tell stories about the history of our church. We try to still tell stories that teach the truths of our faith. And all of those stories are just little stories that seek to tell a part of God's great big story. And here's that story in a nutshell. God created you. God loves you, and God is working every day to make you more like Jesus. Here's how we've been saying it to our adults over the last few weeks in worship, taking our cue from Paul in Ephesians chapter 1. I've been saying from the pulpit up here, the story that God is telling in the world has creation as its beginning, has Christ as its center, and has you and your redemption as its end, as its ultimate aim. And another way of saying that, God created you, God loves you, and God is working every day to make you more like Jesus. That's the great, great big story of the Bible. And we tell that story in all kinds of different ways, day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out. Because we believe that story has the power not just to change you, and it will change you, but because we believe that story has the power to transform the entire world. Let's say a prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a place in your great big story. Help us every day to find ways to play our part. In Jesus' name, amen.
For our scripture reading today, I have asked several of our Passport campers to recite daily memory verses from camp. Each day at camp, the campers learn a new verse and they learn sign language to go with it. How good and how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. <clears throat> live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. Matthew's Matthew 5:48b. The human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, guys. You guys can have a seat with your families. As our time of prayer this morning, I wanted to do something a little different. During worship each night at Passport, our worship, the worship planning team plans a hands-on prayer experience to help engage children. I would like to share with you the experience from the second night of worship while we were there. You have an insert in your worship folder that you can use to participate as I lead you through this time of prayer would also need something to write with, or you can just choose to close your eyes and listen. This morning as we pray, you can see the rock stacks on the communion table. They're also called Karens. These rock piles, or Karens, have many purposes. Hikers use them to mark trails in places where the path may be unclear. They're often built as memorials a place to help people remember someone or something. For thousands of years, they have been used to create a sacred space. Many times in the Bible, we see people using rocks to mark places and times that God has protected or led them. And this morning, they will represent our sacred space or stacks of prayer rocks. Let us pray. On your handout, included in your worship folder, you will find an image of a traditional Karen and what it looked like. Pause and look at it for a moment. Part of joining God's story includes our church family. Who in your church family has helped you better understand God's love, and God's story. Is it a family member or friend, a minister, or your Sunday school teacher? Who is it? Who has helped you better understand God's love and God's story? Write or draw about that person on the bottom rock of the Karen. When we join with each other, we are able to learn and better understand God's story. Write or draw a way that you have seen or heard about God's love recently. Do this on the middle rock.
finally, look at the top rock. Psalm 133, 1 tells us how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. In the top rock, write the word we. When we join together with others in our church, we are no longer alone. We have others. It isn't just me, it's we. We wrote we on the top rock to remind us that understanding God is not something we do alone. We understand God and God's story better together. As we end this time of prayer, I pray that each one of you know that as long as you are part of God's story, you are not alone. I hope each of you will take a moment sometime this week to encourage someone in our church family, letting them know they are not alone because they have chosen to join others in God's story. Amen.
thank you for the beautiful music this morning, and I'd especially like to thank all of the Passport campers. We had a few others in the early service that have come and helped me uh, lead worship and tell about the experience at Passport Camp a few weeks ago. What is your story? What story do you bring with you to worship today? Is it full of laughter and love? Does it feel ordinary? Does it help you believe in something bigger than yourself? God's story is the greatest story ever told, and God's story continues through each one of us. At Passport Kids Camp this summer, we learned that the greatest story ever told is God's story. And as followers of Christ, each one of us is part of God's story. Hebrews 12.2 says, let, our, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the author of our faith and the one who brings it to its goal. Each day at camp, we learned a new way in which we can be part of God's story. We can be part of God's story when we hear God's story. We can be part of God's story when we join together in God's story. We can be part of God's story when we act in God's story. And we are part of God's story when we continue to write God's story. Hear, join, act, write. To hear God's story, we do have to open our ears and our hearts and be willing to hear God, recognize what God is asking of us, and then be obedient in following through with God's request. In Bible story on the first day, our campers learned the story of Moses and the burning bush. Before Moses had this encounter with God, scripture tells us that Moses was pretty distracted by things happening in his life. It took this extreme act from God appearing in a burning bush for him to focus and truly hear what God was asking him to do. In worship that evening, our camp pastor Milligan gave an example of how distractions in our, in our lives can prevent us from hearing God and what God is calling us to do. Her example came from the movie For the Love of the Game. Some of you may have seen it. She describes the scene in the film when the pitcher is having trouble focusing on being able to throw a good pitch. The camera flashes to all the noises that he can hear, the trains going by, the fans yelling at him, buzzers sounding, other players getting irritated, and then he says to himself, clear the mechanism. And all of a sudden, everything around him goes silent. He gets himself in the zone, the distractions around him are blurred out, and he is able to focus on what's important. As part of worship, Milligan had our children think about the things in their life that distracted them from hearing God and reminded us how important it is for us to clear the mechanism sometimes when we get distracted so that we can focus on God's story and hear God as, and what we should do to be part of God's story. On our second day of camp, we learned about joining one another in God's story. Last week, some of you might remember the children's sermon. Maybe you don't, but you might. I used an example of, uh, I gave one popsicle stick to one child and had him try to break it. And then, and he was very successful because the one was not very strong, and then I gave him a bundle of popsicle sticks to see if he could break that, and of course, it was too strong for him to break. Milligan used this example in worship on the second night of camp as a way to emphasize that as Christians, we are much stronger when we join together than when we are by ourselves. We can do so much more for the kingdom of God when we work together. In Bible study that day, the students heard from Acts chapter 4, when Luke tells how the apostles continued to work together to testify 
about the resurrection of the Lord by sharing everything they had, not leaving anyone out. Luke describes all the believers as being one heart and one mind, joining together to proclaim how God's story was going to continue through Jesus. <clears throat> Milligan told this personal story to the children that night as a way that she had experienced in coming together for, and showing God's love. She said, one summer, I went on a youth mission trip, and as we were driving to our destination on the church bus, we were following behind a truck carrying hundreds of folding chairs. When all of a sudden, the chairs started pouring out of the truck all over the highway. Of course, the driver stops, gets out, and starts putting the chairs just a few at a time back in the truck when our youth pastor said, get off the bus and help. So all of the youth on the bus got off and helped to put the chairs back in the truck. And of course, it happened way faster for the truck driver if they had just gone around and left the mess and went about their business. So she told us a personal experience about how a group she was part of came together to help somebody in need. After worship that evening, during our worship response time, which is a time that the camp gives us to come together with me and the chaperones from our church and just our campers so that we can talk for a few minutes about our experience in worship each night. This experience, uh, or this night, we were talking about coming together and joining together for God's love, and our children, by themselves, started thinking about all the things that they had experienced in our town very recently with the tornado. So they reminisced about all the ways that they personally did some things. Some of them sold items and helped and all kinds of stuff. And then they, they talked about ways that they saw our church and other adults helping as well. This experience is a chapter in each of their stories that will stick with them forever. A true example of joining together to show God's love. Knowing that you are loved by God and by others is really good feeling. When we experience God's love, we are called to join with others to spread that same love. It is hard to join together if we do not love one another. The verse for that day was Psalm 133.1. It reminds us that it is good and pleasant to live together in unity. This kind of unity only happens when we join together by loving one another just as God loves us. After worship response that night, we attended a night market and learned about CBF field personnel, Jeff and Alicia Lee, who are missionaries in North Macedonia. As the campers went through the night market, they learned about the food bank that the Lees operate and how it affects the residents in that area. And they also learned a lot about the culture in North Macedonia. Night market is always one of my very favorite nights of camp because it is a wonderful, immersive learning experience. And then on the last night in worship, we collected an offering that would go to build a bigger space for the food bank that the Lees operate so that they can have more food and feed more hungry people. And that night, the campers in our camp session raised almost $3,000 to help the Lees in this mission. And the campers from Central Baptist Church alone gave over 400 of that 3,000. Another great example of how effective we can be when we join together to work for good in God's story. Day three, we learned that we act out God's story when we love our neighbors. In Bible study that day, the campers learned the story about the small group of friends who had a friend who was paralyzed, who tried to get him close to Jesus so that Jesus could heal him. And because the crowd was so big, they took him on the roof, they made a hole and lowered him in front of Jesus, and Jesus healed him. Using this story from Luke's Gospel, the campers were able to think through this idea. The idea that praying for others, talking about how sad a situation makes us, or 
talking about how concerned we are for others are really good things we should do. We should definitely pray for people. But sometimes, sometimes, we actually have to act in order to do what is best for our neighbors. And the friends of the paralyzed man in this story certainly put their concern for their friend into action. Love is more than we, than we feel, feel. Love is also the way that we act. God wants us to act with love wherever we are. We learn that, as it said in Matthew chapter 5, we need to be gracious and generous in the ways we act in the world. By loving us, God has shown us how to act to love others. And finally, we learned that God's story will continue to be written through each one of us. In Bible story on the last day, the campers talked about their favorite movies or stories. And they got to imagine if they could be any character in any story, who would that be? And then they refocused their thoughts into what it would be like to be a character in God's story playing a unique role that only they can play. They each had the opportunity to describe their character as in, in God's story, to dream about how their character would tell about God's love and anticipate ways that they would continue to fill in the blanks when they left camp this summer. On the first day of camp in Bible study, the campers filled out a Mad Lib in Bible study, and who doesn't love a good Mad Lib? And this was the perfect way for the campers to begin thinking about our theme, which was story. So I've asked Jackson Haddon to come up and read his Mad Lib that he created on the first day of camp in, Bibles, in Bible study. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Reed, who was on his way to passport camp. So he packed a backpack, made sure he had his water bottle, and set out. Along the way, he passed Anderson, who absolutely loved Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Reed invited the new friend to join him on his way to camp. As they walked together, they talked about the weather and listened to the birds sing. Along the, along the way, they met Kate and Lindley, who were big fan of Star Wars. They invited their new friends to join them on the adventure. As they walked together, they talked about good movies and their favorite parts of those movies. Along the way, they met Nathan, who got really excited about football games. They invited the new friend to join them on the adventure. As they walked together, they talked about their favorite mascots and big game moments. Along the way, they met Wit, who knew a lot about pandas. They invited the new friend to join them on the adventure. As they walked together, they talked about cute baby animals and other fun animal facts. As they went along the way, they came up upon some friends who were also headed to passport camp, and they all happily made their way to camp. Thank you, Jackson. And then, in our last worship service, our camp pastor, Milligan, had us all participate in one more Mad Lib for the week. But this time, as she read the story aloud, all the campers and chaperones inserted their name when she pointed to us. I'm going to read our final Camp Mad Lib we created, and I have asked Jackson to stay and so that he could insert his name so that you can clearly understand the story. Once upon a time, there were cool passport kid campers named Jackson. They went to camp one summer, and while they were there, they had a lot of fun. But the most important part of the week was when Jackson felt like God was inviting Jackson to do something special for God. It was like God said, Jackson, I want you to write your name into my story. I want you to help me in helping others. When Jackson heard God, Jackson said, hmm. Wonder how this story will end. Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> I hope we will all say yes 
to being part of God's story and fill in the blanks with our own name. Whether we are at camp, on vacation, on a mission trip, or just living our lives here in Noonan, Georgia, God has invited each one of us to be part of God's story. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that each one of our 25 campers and six chaperones had an amazing experience at camp this summer, learning of how your story will continue through each of us. I pray that we will take what we learn and share it with everyone we meet, especially other children who may be encouraged to come to camp next year through hearing the greatest story ever told. It is in your name we pray. Amen. things to call your attention to before Katie comes and leads us in our benediction. First, you'll notice two rosebuds next to me on our communion table, uh, honoring two new births, new people in our congregation, William Thomas Cawthon and Patrick Henry Yancey V. We also have an opportunity this morning to welcome a new member to Central Baptist Church. Miss Martha Pulliam comes to Central on the promise of a letter from Skidaway Island Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Ms. Pulliam comes back to Noonan after a, some time in Savannah, uh, being a, a long-time Noonan resident, uh, and coming back to us as a newish resident at Wesley Woods. I hope you'll find ways to make Ms. Pulliam welcome to Central as she joins our congregation. Also, next Sunday, as we've mentioned already, is Promotion Sunday, Back to School Sunday. We'll use next Sunday in worship as an opportunity to encourage and bless all of our students, parents, and teachers as we get back into the swing of things in the school year and especially recognize those who are rising into our children's program, first graders, uh, and those who are rising into our youth program as well. I hope you'll be here for Promotion Sunday next week. August 29th, the last Sunday in August, is Mercer Day at Central Baptist Church. Uh, we'll have the opportunity on August 29th to welcome Mercer President Bill Underwood to worship at Central, as well as the Dean of the McAfee School of Theology, Greg Deloach, here as we celebrate and honor and recognize a long-standing and important partnership between our church and Mercer University. Put that day on your calendar. Be here that morning if you can. It'll be a great morning for us at Central Baptist. Um, one more thing. As you leave today, if you have not been through our gathering vestibule this morning and by our heritage wall, you'll notice a display in front of our heritage wall display of children's artwork, artwork that was created throughout the week during Vacation Bible School uh, under the, the expert eye and guidance of Betty Hickman. That artwork is at our church now, but it's ready to go to Hope Revisited. Hope Revisited is a visitation center uh, in Coweta County for parents and children in our foster care system. That work will go to that new facility to brighten it up and cheer it up as parents and children have the chance to meet together in safe, bright, new, welcoming environments as they work their way together through foster care. So go check out the work that our children did 
during vacation Bible school uh, that will go to serve our community for years and years to come. Thank you for being present in worship today. Uh, we hope all of you leave this place uh, prepared to have a great, great week out in our community as faithful representatives both of this church and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Katie, come and lead us. One last piece from camp I thought was only appropriate to do the benediction that our camp pastor did each night as we left worship, adding on until its completion. And we'll see how good I am at hand motions. As you leave this place, take time to hear God's story. Join with others who encourage your faith. Act out your faith in the world around you and boldly continue to write your part in God's story. Go in peace. Thank you.